So hi, my name is John and I'll be in this video with Prosper, I'm going to be talking about five steps that you can use today to attract more leads, to convert more sales and to scale your business. Watch this video for more information and follow Prosper while you're at it. <laughs> Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today we've got the sales multiplier himself. John, John, how are you doing today? Very good, Prosper. How are you going? Great stuff. Now, John is here to help you create raving fans. He yeah. will help you attract, serve, and retain you know, clients that will pay you more, work with you longer, and will yeah. refer you to other people over and over and over again. Now, John, did I say that right? Yes, you did. You said that correctly. Yes. <laughs> Great stuff. Okay, yes. so you might be sitting there at home watching this show and thinking, okay, what am I going to learn today? Okay, so obviously right now you probably know your products, you probably know your services, you know that you're world class and you've got the potential to radically change many lives, but mm. you might be probably struggling to get them onto the market. This is when you will go out and find um, John, and he will tell you about his five phase process that he has, um, you know, started, uh, helping his clients get massive results. And that's the reason why we have him on the show today. John, yeah. thank you so much. Tell us a little bit about your story and how you got to come up with the five, uh, phase, uh, process methodology. So, so my story is I started this business about five years ago. And when I started the business, I was just another software developer, web developer, a really technical person, right? So I knew how to do to get the job done and, you know, I knew how to get apps built properly. I knew how to do, get websites built properly. I knew how to get the work done and do it really at a very good um, quality level. But the but what what came to what I came to realize over time is yes you can get the work done and it's great to deliver very good work but in order to have a business you have to sell you have to go out there and market you have to get people to you have to build demand for what you did and so and so a lot of what I have had to develop came out of frustrations because you know I was thinking how come people that are able to build things are we are, we are putting out work that is slightly, you know, below the caliber of what I was doing. How come they're getting more clients than I'm getting? And I, I just thought all you had to do was just do some really good work and they'll come running to you. Hey, look at all the good work I've done, you know, kind of thing. Um, so it, it was built out of frustrations of not being able to get enough working and not being able to grow my business well enough. So I, I, I thought, okay, fine. These sales stuff, these sales and marketing stuff, it can't be that hard, can it? Um... So coming from an engineer's software developer's brain, we tend to think about systems and processes in like really documented ways of doing things. So I thought if you take, um, cause at the end of the day, marketing is obviously creative, but it's also a science. There, is, um, there are processes, there are ways of doing things that have been tested and proven over the years. Uh, through many people who've sold and done marketing. There's formulas, there's processes uh, that can be done. So what for me, what I, what I wanted to do is I wanted to distill the sophisticated marketing thing and kind of distill it into a process um, in a way that, that it was going to be easy for me to sell because uh, like many other people who start a business, we start a business because you're passionate about a service, you're passionate about something, but we don't start a business because we like to sell. So if we can make our job of marketing and sales easy, then we can get more people paying us money to do the things we love and life can be easier. So that's kind of how, that's kind of my, my little journey to, to transition from being a guy that just did services only to, um, to a guy that kind of became, um, I would say more of an expert in marketing and uh, online marketing. So the process that I put together is based on a typical customer journey. Um, so, you know, what are the steps that customers are going to go through from the time they don't know you from above so up to I'm a customer that I'm repeating. So, so I, I narrowed it down to about five processes. So initially, um, you will start with some form of a, you will start with the first step being some form of a, sorry, I'm just my mic. So you'll start the whole process with, with some form of a, a awareness, right? The initial stage where, and another thing I didn't want to do is to start to be that pushy guy, that sell, the, the pushy sales guy. So um, I'm a big fan of attraction marketing where you draw people to you as opposed to push things to you. 
So obviously the first thing you want to do is have some form of understanding, like lay down the foundation, you know, understand who is your customer, what are the problems you're facing, you know, what's your market segment, what's your niche, who is your competition, like just get a really good foundation of where you are. A lot of people call that a situational analysis or something like that. And then the next thing is you want to look at what strategies am I used to, am I going to use to and attract these customers? So that's the second phase of the process. How am I going to attract these people? Okay, once you attract them and they start coming to you, you know, there's, there's attracting people and then capturing them, providing them value so that they, you can capture the details. How do I engage them so that they can be able to buy things from me, right? How do I engage them? How do I convert them so that they can buy things from me? And then from there on, it, it comes down to serving people, which is the part that a lot of us enjoy when we start a business. We, we want to just do the job. We want to work with clients. We want to get those outcomes for them, right? And then, so we look at how do we serve people. Then the final step is, okay, once we serve them and we've done things for them, how do we retain them? How do we keep them um, coming back to buy more of our services? How do we keep them telling uh, people about it, about us? So, so that's kind of the genesis of my whole process and how my, my little journey. I hope I didn't talk too much. <laughs> no, no, not at all. The yeah. more information we get from you, the better it is. I Thank mean, you. considering your services are getting higher and more expensive soon. So we, yes. we might as well <laughs> milk you for all the content. So you did yeah. mention that, um, yeah. you know, um, in order for anybody else to sell their products and actually create raving fans, because yeah. that's what we're in business for, to actually... Yeah. Exactly. We have clients that are excited about our products. Abs- we absolutely. Need a really clear game plan, all right? Yeah, exactly. It has, to, it has to focus on the uh, customer journey, which you have outlined. Now, you did mention the first part of it yep. has to do with uh, building a strong foundation and finding who your ideal customer is. Yes. Now, does, does that really matter? Because, you know, you can just go on social media and ask people to buy your stuff. Why yep. would you? go out of your way to find your ideal customer it's it's very important to know your ideal customer because um the thing is um if if you try to be a lot of things it's a a couple of ways to look at it if you try to be everything to everybody it's going to be really hard for you to service those people so for me i always try to think who is a person who is that person that i know that i can absolutely knock it off the back for them i can give them the absolute maximum outcomes right and you know we've all made those kind of businesses mistakes in business because i remember when i started out um you know you would go for everybody anyone anyone with money please <laughs> help me. i would do anything <laughs> you just call them and they will come <laughs> exactly <laughs> i walk around with a sign saying saying i'll say, i'll do everything for you for money like you know, <laughs> i walk around with a sign anybody anybody um but the thing is one is there's a lot of things so it's it's very important to find the right kind of customer for you because one is not everyone will value the services the way you value not everyone will be able to afford to be able to pay the amount of money you want to be able to afford uh, to, to pay not anyone will get the maximum out outcomes from what you're offering um so it's better to get people that will get the maximum outcomes and it's also going to be easier for you to deliver your services if you're dealing with the right kind of customers so that's why it's very very important to understand uh what kind of customer they are so you know you know even the way you communicate with them you know you the way you communicate with them it's there's that it's it's that kind of working with people it's you know i always think of i always like to work with people that i actually enjoy hanging out with you know what i mean like you know it's good to work with people that you actually enjoy hanging out with so sometimes it could be a, a, the, your values match with them and the way they look at the world and the way you look at the world is kind of very similar you know i think it's there's a lot of you know there's a lot of things that i look at the world in terms of my values and in terms of um the way you know things like integrity doing business with integrity you might you know i do i mean there's a lot of things that you look for with customers and that's why it's important to find the right kind of customers not just about anyone (laughs) yeah great stuff well obviously you've put it all in a nutshell because you can't serve people if you don't quite know what their needs are exactly what it is that you're going to be giving them all right so you you're now successful in knowing the right kind of person that you're going to be going through your yes. your methodology then goes into um the attract phase yeah where you've lay out the the better plan the next um step from that is to yes. actually automate the client's attraction now how does exactly. that all work together you found the people that you want to bring um you know work 
and serve how yeah. do you then bring them to you do you just put them in a bag and <laughs> put them in a bag <laughs> oh, that's actually nice i'll try that i should <laughs> go down the, go down the street the biggest in all is like <laughs> hey, that you look like my perfect customer. Hey, what are you doing? Put a big bag in them and <laughs> kidnap them and bring them in the office. Hmm, that's not. A, all right, I'll write that one down. <laughs> no, but, um, the, the thing is, um, when it comes to attraction, one thing is I want to try and get into a conversation that is already in someone's head. So, um, so what I'll do is now that I understand who the customer is and what are the problem problems are, what are the pains for, pains are when I start putting out content and when I start putting out, so the first thing is obviously I'm going to go to where these people are congregated, right? If you want to go and find a lot of uh, Muslims, you go to a mosque because there's lots of people there. If you want to go find a lot of, a bunch of Christians, go to a church. There's going to be lots of them there, right? Um, so it's a case of finding where are these people congregated? Are they on Facebook? You know, find out where, where am I like to find lots of them. Then it's kind of like looking at what is important. Content, things like content is very important. So I'm going to be, if I'm going to be writing content, it'd be about putting content that is valuable for these kind of people. And then I just making, uh, providing the content that provides value to them, not just like uh, putting together some like, you know, little, uh, just content for the sake of uh, putting content, but putting things that are actually going to provide value for people and something that, that is going to make it worth for them to put their details down for you to be able to, continue the conversation all right so yeah so it's about finding out where are they and then what do they want and then kind of talking to those problems using uh good content then um capturing so sorry um capturing their details so that we can be able to continue the conversation and then also giving them opportunities to um obviously with automation is you can give them an opportunity to decide this is the kind of uh, information that I want to talk to you about. This is the kind of direction that I want to go. Um, and that's kind of helps a, a lot. Great. Stuff. Okay. <clears throat> so, so definitely there's no putting people in, in, in a bag. It's actually, no, yep, no skidnapping. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually yeah. relating to the people and exactly. engaging with them so that yes. they get value from you. Value. And, Yes, the more value you give to somebody, then they would want to reciprocate that with a credit card or something like that, right? So with, a, with, a, with a credit card. I mean, and there's also the balance in terms of value. Um, and that's where things like automation becomes really valuable. Um, obviously, there's a fine line between providing, uh, being, uh, just providing value and being on the friend zone forever. <laughs> um, so you want people to eventually do something. So it's, um, there's a process. That's why automation helps because you can give them value and then kind of, take them through different steps of the different steps to sort of like try and ascend that relationship a bit further. Um, so that's kind of why I love automation. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. Well, yeah. A, a lot of us are using it in the background. You get the leads over there and, yep. and as soon as they are in, they now take, you know, whatever routes they want, depending on what you're providing them with, with what the they want. engagement. Absolutely. So, you do then from the phase number four, is the part where a lot of people skip everything else and they just want to go in and serve. Okay. Yep. Now, <clears throat> yep. Obviously now you've got the clients. Yay. How then are yeah. you, you yeah. know, provide that service in such a way that, you know, you you, you deliver and wow customers with, um, with the experience. So, so with providing services and that is a very big part and that's a very big shift in business right now is we traditionally tend to think about providing services um, and a lot of and it's a lot of people that I serve um, a lot of the people I serve in the market are predominantly service businesses your coaches your consultants your um, people selling professional services um, we're sort of used to the model whereby you know someone comes to work with a bunch of work that needs to be done and then we go and do the work and deliver so like a done for you type service um, I think w w with with that we need to define there is there's a lot of ways to serve a customer. So, you know, one way you, is you could provide them the information and, and the content and the things they need, and they do it from themselves. Um, you being the expert and providing that content, the other option is you can do it with them. So, you know, you, um, like for example, some of the stuff that we've done in automation is we get a bunch of people in a room and um, I'm just walking there and just supervising and helping them. I'm not supervising. Supervising is a bad word, but yeah, but you, you get it. I'm here to support you and help you help them implement. And I've, I've given them all the templates and help them do the work. So I'm doing it with them. 
or and that's a case with um a lot of uh, structured programs that we do now, like you, you've got your, your coaching calls and stuff like, so you're doing it with them and the other stuff is doing for them. Um, so I think when it comes to delivering services about thinking, what are the different ways I can deliver services to my customers? Not just having one way of looking at service, services, just different ways to deliver value. Cause at the end of the day, clients want value and an outcome, right? They want an outcome and that outcome might mean you do it for them. Outcome might mean, um, uh, you do it with them. Like some of the, some of my clients right now, they've got, they're they are like a marketing department for a company. I'm not doing any campaigns for them. I just provide the strategy and the structure and give them all the templates and things and they do it themselves. And I just check and see how they're going. Um, and that could be one way of doing it. So it's being able to identify what the client needs and, and, what, and, and having different multiple options of serving things. And then once again, you can apply automation. For example, um, I think about like the way you onboard a new client, a client from the time a client starts in, how do you onboard them into your business and, and how do you report in terms of how you're uh, doing things? What are some of the things you can do um, to, um, to gather information from clients that can be automated? Um, so there's a lot of stuff where automation can come in place with being able to help you deliver. You know, and a good example is you could put, put together a membership site um, there's lots of different ways you can do to even another thing that we are also trying um, is value adding. So for example, if someone does X amount of service with us, we've got a membership portal where we can give them more content and more ways to do, to enhance what we've just given them. So it's just, there are ways that are, it's just a lot of these things might take a little bit of time to implement, but once you get them done, then it makes, there's that multiplier effect. It makes it easy for, it makes it people, it makes people, it makes, it just wows people. Um, right. Things like remembering, um, yeah, anyway, I can keep going on and on because you can tell I'm passionate about it. I could keep going on and on, but that's kind of in a nutshell what I'm trying to talk about. Great okay. stuff. It, so it, obviously it, once you've wowed mm, those customers, yeah. They're going to keep wanting to come back yes. for more. And you've mentioned things like exactly. membership sites and, um, you know, opportunities yeah. to work further with them because, you know, they're really excited about exactly. um, the service. Now, how do you help exactly. people yeah. implement tools and campaigns to keep com uh, clients engaged? Because as you would know, it costs a whole lot yeah. more to yeah. grab a new oh, customer yeah. than it is to retain whatever you already have. How do you, then help your customers there with um, with that part there. So, so, so once a, once a customer is in, um, there's a couple of things to think about. Okay, so they bought this particular service, uh, the, some particular service or product from you. Um, another way to think about is what's the next logical step for them? What's the next thing that's going to give them the most amount of value? I, okay, so I'm, I don't want to just sell things for the sake of selling. What's the next logical step? If someone buys um i don't know if someone buys this this mic here they might need um the thing what do you call it that that cool thing that people hold them you know this all these good podcasters have got all these gizmos you know little things you can put in the front yeah you know the things that makes the thing hang over but you know those are things that are going to enhance my experience with this product with the mic yeah yeah and it's not about a matter of shoving stuff into customer and making more money but as a customer it's going to give me more value and if i'm doing a lot of podcasts yeah sure i don't want to be spitting on my mic and doing yeah. and making those pop noises <laughs> and i want to i want to look cool like the cool kids right so it's a matter of thinking what's going to be the next logical step for the customer and that is how we now start to engineer the a return path you know because we've got to mean how do we get them to a return path so so that does that mean I need to start nurturing them in order for them to purchase? Do I try and upsell them um, or the next product that's going to make give them more value and help them get more utilization of what they've already bought? Um, so that's the first thing to kind of think about. But in terms of looking at uh, keeping customers coming back, the first thing you want to do is implement what you call a long-term nurture campaign. So it's uh, it, it could be you know what it's, it's kind of, it could be like a, a thing where you kind of nurture them with more information around what you are they, with every it's campaign really you always got to have like an end in mind right you've got to have an end in mind in terms of like yeah i'm nurturing them and i'm providing them value in terms of this what's going to be the end outcome for them so it could be i'm, I'm nurturing them on a particular tangent so that i can be able to eventually on sell them some uh something else it could be something like simple things like the few good stuff remembering anniversary dates and special occasions um, and then kind of uh, reaching them that it could be putting them if you've got a very helpful newsletter 
it could be looking at ways you can have like things that things that you can just surprise people like you know you know how like with frank can you know what frank can does he sends you stuff and you're like oh i didn't expect that you know like especially you on your birthday or <laughs> i know i know i know or even just like a bonus like just an, an announced bonus you you know you could probably have like an, an announced bonus that comes with your product but people don't know it because you never announced announced it and then all of a sudden you start using your product and it's like oh we just thought because you bought this you might need that and here is that for free oh okay you know like i bought this course by todd brown um it's called e5 um and then all of a sudden before i realized i've had a, a box in my house oh interesting and then they realized a, a few weeks later it's like oh here's a whole bunch of stuff bunch of recordings that i did back uh, and another time that were very useful and people like them here's that for free oh i didn't expect that it didn't cost him it, it, it might cost you some things might cost you some things might not cost you but it's just one of those things when you give people things that they didn't expect that will make them um, want to come back so there's a few strategies there's a whole bunch of campaigns you can remember those are kind of like few actionable things that people can do that um, will keep customers coming back great stuff so obviously yeah. in your business <clears throat> when you take your clients through that five step you know process you are also yeah. there to support them and help them yeah. grow their business in the process exactly how then yeah. if somebody was yeah. watching this uh, video John and they're, yeah. they're, they're really passionate you know, and, and, and they're really passionate about growing their business and putting mm -hmm. through that five phase process. How can they get a hold of you, John? The easiest way will be to just, uh, yeah, go to my website, multiplieragency.com or just Google my name, John Kamuchao, or John Kamuchao, you know, you'll find me. <laughs> I'm in the internet and you'll find me in all the good places, not the bad ones. <laughs> um, yeah, just co connect with us. Um, um, I'm going to be releasing, uh, we're just putting, I'm just, I've, I've been building a lot of content around, I've been building a lot of content around the topic that I talk about. So we, I'm going to be launching the Academy, which will have like a lot of free content for people to just go and learn a little bit about funnels, automations, and how to make websites profitable. Um, so yeah, so that's going to be coming up soon. But at this stage, probably the easiest way is to just go to my website, multiplieragency.com, I guess, or johncamuchao.com. Um, easiest way to do it i guess um yeah <laughs> great stuff well now that you've heard this um obviously yeah. you've been watching this and john has been very generous with all the information that is really needed for you to actually start scale and grow a business that's profitable and enjoyable through the five phases um that he has commissioned with his business okay so you might yeah. be wondering how you can actually start getting these results. I'll be putting in all the links that uh, John has spoken about in the bottom of this show. And for you to actually go out there in order to sell your products, create raving fans, you really need a game plan that is going to focus on maximizing customer value, your profits yeah. at every yeah. step of the customer journey. And if you watch this video again, you will learn all the five stages that you actually need to take your client through before you just come in and start asking money from them. John, thank Absolutely. you so much for your time, sir. Thank you so much, brother. Great stuff. Cool. Yeah, good. Great stuff. Because now you're giving in all the data and I'm like, wow. Cool. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. Right. Let's, yeah, yeah. let's, let's, let's yeah. have it going. Yeah. Cool stuff. And okay, now it's recording. So, awesome. okay.